Hello, four-year journey members. It's Bob Lucas. It is June 21st, and I hope you're all doing really well. Judging by price, we should be doing really well. Um, and I thought I'd just come on here to record a quick video because it has been almost a month, I think around three weeks since my last video. So I felt a new one was warranted, even though I really don't have any new messages to give you today. I think the last three or four videos combined essentially give you the tool set to, um, to be successful and to execute on this strategy. But of course, some reinforcing words probably doesn't hurt at this point. Um, so let's get into some ideas that I have here. Firstly, obviously the, um, the model portfolio of 25 BTC is doing really well. We're up around about 145% without any stress. And I think that is the the, the one point I want to reinforce here is that a hodler may not have massive short-term gains, for example, that a leveraged trader might have catching a, a pretty big move, but we don't have the stress. We don't have the stress of the market going down by $1,000. We don't have to be concerned with all the noise on the chart, and we certainly don't have to risk in leveraged markets our own BTC trying to get more BTC like some of the leverage traders are doing. Now, some of them are successful and you will see on Twitter and on social media about people making a lot of money trading leveraged Bitcoin, but you're only seeing five to 10% of the successful cases. You're only seeing, uh, and even for the traders that are successful, you're only seeing their successful trades. Very few people are saying how they were wrecked. Very few people are sharing how they've lost money in a rising market. So um, just be aware that most of these leverage traders, around about 90% of them, I would estimate, are losing money in a rising market. So think about that. Not in a declining market, but in a rising market, they're still managing to over leverage, risk too much, get caught up in the chopping action of the market, and essentially either underperforming just a straight hodl strategy or even losing money unfortunately so the beauty of this strategy is the fact that it is stress and worry free it is easy for me to say that of course once the market is up 145 percent but the point is that even if it was to fall by 30 or 40 percent at this point it would still be up by a considerable amount so now that we have the strong hand status as i like to say meaning that we're in at a reasonable point the market has moved considerably higher. We can sit back and we can be fine with $2,000 and $3,000 swings to the downside even and not worry about that or not panic to the point where we feel that we need to get out or sell. Next question I want to address that I receive often is, I haven't fully allocated or I don't have any yet and the market's gone much higher than I thought it would get to. I'm waiting for a pullback, but should I buy now? And you know, this question gets old, but I want to answer it because it's a legitimate question that people have. And my answer has always been throughout this process that now is the time to get your position. But with the caveat that if you get in now, that you will be okay with or prepared for a retracement of 30 to even 40% in this market. And in one of the previous videos, I showed that during the last bull market, we had frequent and consistent 30 to 40% retracements in the market. But if you want to wait for a 30 to 40% retracement in this market, you may not get that. And for example, we haven't had one yet. We had around about an 18% retracement recently, not enough for anybody that was waiting for a 30 to 40% pullback to reload. And what's happened since is the market has moved up by 40 to 50% each time. And now you're sitting at a point where if you are waiting for a 30% retracement, you still would be, would be buying in at a level that is above what you were waiting for. Okay, so I know as price gets up and goes higher and it's up 180, almost 200% off the bottom, you start to think, well, it just has to be now, right? It's almost like walking into, walking into a casino and looking at a roulette table and seeing 10 reds in a row and you think, well, black's next. It has to be black, right? There is no reason why it, it, it can't be any other way. There's been 10 red spins, but of course, we know that 
each spin is independent and there's 50 50 chance and it's not an exact analogy but it gives you the uh, the sense that if if you're looking at this prior move or this recent move and thinking well it's overextended it's gone too far it has to pull back right now then i think you're not looking at this market from the correct lens what we're seeing right here is a massive scramble to accumulate bitcoin and in my opinion and this is only an opinion it's not based on any on any sort of evidence or scientific uh, proof but just my experience of the markets and what i see in this in this tape and what we've seen since the this zone here around the 6000 and the drop i believe that uh, all the all, all the sellers are obviously exhausted they're out of this market most either <clears throat> capitulated in this area here or capitulated during this the massive decline into the four-year cycle low then we had this long period of accumulation there was additional heavy accumulation in this area there was accumulation in this area but this candle right here where i came out with my four-year cycle low is in this was the aha moment this was the point in the uh, in the rally here where supply completely dried up and then um, price discovery took over and the market has moved higher ever since i believe there is just not enough bitcoin going around right now there is far too much demand for bitcoin new money not old money new money we've had the rotation now this cycle here is over this is a new four-year cycle this is the new accumulation phase of a four-year cycle and it's hungrier than it was in the prior cycle we are seeing gains much earlier in the cycle than we did last time and i think people are just fooled by this last four-year cycle where they think oh look at this it's just accumulated i mean and i'm guilty of this as well but i'm not guilty to the sense to the point where i'm stubborn in any one view i let the market dictate what it wants to do and i try and adapt as fast as possible unfortunately a lot of people have not adapted to to this cycle and this cycle is different to the last cycle this one took a long time to form and, and to start building out of this lower accumulation area this time around and whether it's because there's more awareness or whether because from a macroeconomic standpoint or from a world standpoint we have a rush to, to safety or a rush to buy these types of assets that aren't correlated to general markets there's many reasons why it's the case but i believe right here we have a level of accumulation that doesn't seem to me like it wants to end anytime soon i don't believe this is highly speculative right i believe we are accumulating and we have seen three or four weeks of accumulation in this eight to nine thousand dollar range i don't know i don't see why i gotta be perfectly honest with you why we couldn't see a fairly fast move to twelve to thirteen thousand dollars over the next three to four weeks and then pause for three or four more weeks in the next cycle next 60 day cycle and then go again and then go again i don't see a reason why we couldn't be at twenty thousand dollars by october or november okay it's not a prediction it's just a read of where the market is going and in general my rule of thumb is where price appears to be heading or where price is heading in a certain direction there's a very good chance that in the future it's going to be somewhere beyond in that direction and when you clearly look at this chart what do you see you see a directional strong directional trend and move to the high side and if you don't think price is going to go up here and you're expecting it to go down here then basically you're predicting that this trend is going to end and it's based on very little evidence and in general when markets are trending with such consistency or such force they will most likely end up continuing that trend for a much longer period than you expect so stop fighting this trend and stop trying to get a better price by 10 20 or 30 percent you're missing out on getting established and getting that position before it goes up to maybe 20,000 and then you don't know from there where it goes you know my price targets you've seen my previous videos I have no idea when we get to that level but you want to stop messing around with the allocation and just get the allocation and be happy with it because you have a long-term strategy in mind if you're on this journey 
the target is 56,000 at the 1 trillion market cap level, but probably in a six figure range, 100, 125, 150, and over 200,000 as well. So we're talking about f four figures, not five. We're talking about four figure price still, right? We're below the 10,000 point and our target is six figures. So we're skipping an entire figure there. That's our target. So worrying about catching this small move, and I know I'm repetitive here. I've said the same thing in a couple of different videos, um, but getting a position now really doesn't matter what level still when you're talking about the hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollar price targets that we've talked about. Okay. And here's something else I want to point out really quickly here. I found this I found this chart very interesting today and I and I, I said this out on Twitter. But we have or well, the world now has thirteen trillion dollars worth of bonds that have been issued and investors have bought, whether it's pension funds or, you know, um, hedge funds, whoever it might be, has bought $13 trillion of bonds that provide negative yields, meaning that they provide no return. Typically, when you lend somebody money, you expect a return. That's essentially why you're risking your assets. But $13 trillion worth of money has decided that they don't want any money back. They just feel that there's perceived safety in issuing and giving that money to somebody to hold and when they when they get this money back in five years when the, when the when the uh, the debt matures they're going to get less they're going to get less think about that than what they issued and that's not risk free so when there's 13 trillion dollars worth of debt that's out there that's uh, that has zero interest where just a year ago there was only 6 trillion it basically means there is a scramble to buy assets that are perceived to be safe. People are concerned that um, when whatever other risk asset that they're in, that they're gonna lose their money, that the value is gonna go down. And this is a flight to safety. This is a, a sort of a, you know, a risk off hedging type of move. But it's, telling, it's showing us on a grand scale just how much money is flowing into these types of assets. And I can guarantee you that a lot of what you're seeing right here right now is part of that move and because bitcoin now has more legitimacy than it had four years ago during the last start of the four-year cycle i think this is why you're seeing um, much more flows coming into this asset class because there's much more trust in this we're also seeing the same type of move more recently in gold and here is a monthly chart of gold and you're seeing this massive foundation here, the eight-year cycle low, and then now we have this massive candle here, both on the weekly, is showing something similar, but on the monthly, multiple touches of a resistance area that's now broken through. I think we've broken through, we may spend some time consolidating just above that breakout point, but when you look at this chart, right, you're seeing flows into gold which also is a zero interest asset uh, with obviously thousands of years of history as a hedge and as an asset that has no counterparty risk. You own gold, you own gold free, and you have no obligation to anybody else. It is pure money. And Bitcoin, I don't think is at that status just yet, but it, it is catching on and it is getting to that point where it has very similar properties. It has similar properties now, of course, but in terms of trust, because this is all about trust. Gold itself, obviously, as, as many like to point out, is just a rock, right? It's, it's, it's a natural element, but it has value because of its scarcity and because people have trust in its issuance that it cannot be manipulated and it cannot be just produced out of thin air. And that scarcity and that, that trust has value. And it's a store of value. And Bitcoin is, has achieved, uh, is achieving more and more widespread trust and faith. And that's why you're also seeing this type of move now when it comes to this type of backdrop. So in an economy, a world economy that to me is beginning to struggle, as far as I'm concerned, I don't care that the stock market is at, at least in the US, 
at all-time highs again. The Fed wouldn't be talking about reducing interest rates if things were great, as the stock market is trying to tell us. The stock market is up because it's a liquidity play, and as the Fed loosens rates and liquidity uh, and, and the valuation metrics get better with lower rates, you're seeing more and more, inf more, and more inflows into those risk assets as well. So um, it's not to be not to be confused with um, solid fundamentals and a market that's going up for fundamental reasons. And that's, again, not to overemphasize the point here, but I think that's a dynamic that's in play with Bitcoin here. And again, we will see 30 to 40% pullbacks. I don't advise waiting for those to buy. If you have extra capital above and beyond your standard risk, um, the standard risk allocation that you want to have for Bitcoin and you want to deploy some more, then maybe on a 30% pullback, that's when you deploy. But in general, um, I'm looking at this 10 week moving average and you know, this to me looks orderly. People th think it's speculative and it's uh, unsustainable, but to me this looks orderly and I don't want to discount that. So I want to just zoom out now and, and this is not just for hopium purposes, right? But I want to zoom out and, and just emphasize again that um, you know, the goal is much higher Right, the goal is all the way up here at the two hundred thousand dollar range, in my opinion. And again, we're talking about a very small portion of that move. So, as four year journey hodlers, that's our goal. Keep that in mind. Uh, it's nice to see this type of move in the short term. It's nice to see portfolio up a hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred percent. But we're going for a forty x move and we're looking at a 2x move and 3x move right now. So we have a long way to go, and it's gonna require a lot more patience. It's gonna require being able to sit in these positions with massive gains, and if all goes well, once we get to 20,000 above, the gains will be even bigger, and you need to prepare yourself now for those, those gains that are to come. And by being prepared, then you won't feel the need to sell on a 40 or 50% decline or you won't feel as if the gains are too much where you do need to sell. Now again, the last thing I want to end with the caveat is this does not mean it's going to happen. Okay, I don't want you to feel that uh, that I'm saying that this is a guarantee or a certainty because it's not. There's no such thing in anything we do investing or trading related. Um, and for that reason, you need to keep your allocation reasonable relative to your overall wealth. And I've talked about my 10% allocation rule. Um, now, yes, I am older, I am more established, I have more diversified assets. So if a 10% to me, not the end of the world, but for many of you that, that you're looking at these charts and you're thinking, thinking about this as if you have to put everything in and risk everything to make everything. And again, I wanna say that that's not the way you should approach this. Should should you or could you allocate more than say the ten percent? Yes, you could. Um, if you're younger and and you you know you have got um, more time on your hands, of course you can risk more. But just my general rule is um, this: like anything else, is an investment, and investments uh, are not guaranteed by any means. So that's the four-year journey video update I'm providing today. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, as always, leave any comments that you that you like. Um, Good luck, stay strong, and be patient. All the best.